Welcome to Vote Pro Podcast, the award-winning cannabis news podcast brought to you by VotePropot.com. Here are your hosts, Phil Adams, Jay Breton and Andrew McCready's. Well, hello once again, ladies and gentlemen, and Happy New Year. Welcome, everybody, to our annual now. Right. We, we've been around yeah. long enough to have annual things. Um, and this is our annual New Year's podcast. Uh, welcome to Vote Pro Podcast. We're glad to have you. You know, um, I had a pretty decent New Year's Day. New Year's Eve was kind of uneventful this year, and I'm sure it is for yeah, lots of yeah. folks. They're just you're just not going out to right. parties. I, I didn't see what was going on in in Times Square or anything. No, Did you I didn't pay attention. I went to bed. Because I, I I can imagine Times Square social uh, distancing yeah. on New Year's Eve. It seems kind of oxymoronic yeah, I, or, I or just mor- moronic. <laughs> From what I understand, in New York City. Only people who were invited downtown. There are certain yeah. areas where you could the elite see the uh, fireworks <laughs> and watch the ball drop. That was a big deal. Yeah, their mayor was out there dancing with his wife, but he was sure to tell everyone else not to come out. So, yeah. Well, I mean, those. That's one of the things that I have done once and don't ever. Did really you do need that? You went again. to New York City for the. Uh, I did it one time that. back back in the uh, early '80s. I think it was. It was. It was not as cold a night, but it was a little wet, and it was uh, it was okay. Yeah, just so many. But I, I don't. I don't. God. Just it's just it's, it was a long night, and I was actually by you know by twelve oh one, I was ready to get. The and hell and out. since nine eleven, my understanding is once you get through the security, you can't leave until it's all done. Well, that's what, I mean, that's what I mean. I, since nine eleven, so yeah. so now you got like. Right. Pee in a Gatorade bottle. Plus, you, no booze. I'm not going to a <laughs> yeah. your seat party where I can't bring booze. That's right. And and some of the people down there were pretty sketchy. And, really? and so I, yeah. I was ready nah, to go. That's not yeah, for so me. Th- there's there's that. There's you know New Orleans for Mardi right. Gras. Did it? Don't need same, to do it again. Same. You know, I've done that. Yeah. The, you know, downtown on the mall in DC yeah. for uh, for Fourth of July. Did it? Don't yeah. need to ever do it. I'm again. I'm just not into that whole um, sea of people scene, man. That's not for me. You know. I don't even right. enjoy going to like events, like football games, pro football games with fifty thousand people. It's just well, that I like, yes. and I, it's not the crowds that I, I don't. It's just the whole, I don't know, just to be there, just to be there. You know, you know what else today is, Phil? Today is a very special day indeed. I'm, I'm sure, but you're, I'm sure you're going to tell it me. Is it is our oh, fuck you guys. <laughs> it's our, it is our <laughs> colleague Andrew McCready's birthday. Happy birthday, buddy! Happy you birthday, know, I, Andrew McCready! Yeah, the worst day of the year to have a birthday. We I'll have been the friends. Worst all day. three of us have been friends forever. I personally, Andrew's been my best friend since we were ten years old. So it's fifty. Right. Jay was telling me that. <laughs> This is how be- far back we go to. <laughs> For his birthday when we were young. Uh, like a 12. I gave you, what did I give you? We were, talking about, all, we were talking about George Harrison on the phone yesterday. Yeah, that's right. I gave you and all you things gave me a, You mentioned something about that album. Anyway, that's how long we've known each other. So wow. we've had, what, 50 freaking birthdays yeah, together? Yeah, you and I have been friends since for 50 years. Yeah. And, and and I I knew oh. you guys since not no, too no, long just a couple after years that, after you know, that. Yeah. Junior that's high right. school. So. so happy birthday, my friend. Happy birthday. Happy birthday and happy new yep. year. Well, see, we we are much more humble in these days of your and uh and uh I don't think I used that phrase properly, but that's okay. Um and and what we're going to do today like we usually do is first of all, we're going to listen to our predictions <laughs> from last year for 2020. <laughs> And, our delusions, um, our delusions, <laughs> yes. right? Which predictions usually are, um, and and some of them are kind of almost yeah. on point, and some of them are just kind of laughable. Yeah. But we're going to go that, and then we're going to knock out some new predictions, and uh, so we'll have something to laugh about next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is our. We've been doing this for two and a half years now, guys. Two and a half so years a now, and and we really haven't learned no, a fucking nothing. thing in all that time. <laughs> no, that's not true. But but really, 2020 turned out to be kind of a banner well, year. Well, you know, it's weird. It, I it mean, everyone's talking about what a horrible year 2020 is, and for obvious reasons, that's the case. But not so much when it comes to cannabis, right? Right. But yeah, it right. really wasn't a bad year for cannabis. Not, not at all. all. It was no, a it was a year. really good year pretty for good cannabis. Year. So let's let's start with some of the predictions for 2020. <laughs> and Andrew, you had a number of them, and, and, and Jay... Uh, was kind enough to kind of catalog those for us. But, well, I made. Uh, I got a little clip. Let's play the clip. Here's a clip from last right. year's show. Same time last year. Here are Andrew's predictions. 
So uh, now that we've gone through what happened in 2019, there's a whole bunch of stuff just waiting to happen in 2020. Um, what do we think some of those things are going to be? Andrew. Why do I have um, to go first? I bet you have. Huh? <laughs> Inside joke. Why do I have to go first? I'm just kidding. Well, because, you know. Because I was pointing at myself. Alf, we're going alphabetically. <laughs> okay. By first name. Okay, actually, okay, my predictions for 2020. As I was saying, I want to just run down a bunch of them real quick. I think there's going to be a big increase in the international cannabis business industry. Okay. Uh, I think other countries are just going to get more ingrained. I think you're going to see more and more countries legalizing and setting up uh, um, re- regulations quickly. And we're going to bring it all to you. I don't think there's going to be any federal legalization as long as Mitch McConnell is the leader of the Senate, the majority leader. I believe cannabis will. This is a hard one. Either cannabis is going to play very little or any role in the 2020 elections, or it's going to be a hot button button issue. I don't know. I kind of believe it's not going to be that big of a deal. (laughs) Okay, next. Uh, I think Tucker Carlson is going to launch his own line of hemp bow ties. Let me see. Next. Oh, that's going to be a tough one, man. I don't think that's going to happen. Not even a laugh, you have dude. To, yeah, you have to listen to the previous show where, where Phil went off on Tucker. So I that, did. That I was, went off on Tucker. And his, rightfully so. Okay. Rightfully so. Now, here's a big ties. one. Here's a big one. I think that I predict that the anti-cannabis groups are going to do a major pushback. They're going. It's going to be their battle of the bulge. And, and it might happen oh. during the 2020 elections. Oh, the I think the last gasp. I think the they're, they're gasp, just, yeah. they're, they're, it's going to be their last hurrah that's going to be their kamikaze run, their bonsai run, mm. excuse me. And then, for last but not least, I think there's going to be a big breakthrough in medical marijuana research. I think uh, they're going to come up and go, oh, so we just cured, you know, crickets or something, you know. Rickets or whatever, you know, it's crickets, psoriasis. Crickets. <laughs> hey, man, if you can cure crickets, crickets with weed up there. I think, I think they're going to come up with a with a cure for, you know, like psoriasis or, this, some, or a heart so disease. All this, or, new, uh, all this new research is finally going to pay off. Yeah, I think off, you're going to start of, seeing yeah. some, some breakthroughs. Also, another thing I predict for this coming up year, I think uh, people that you do not associate with marijuana are going to come out of the closet and go, I smoke weed. Or, <laughs> or there's going to be a picture of someone like Rush Limbaugh doing a bong hit. Yeah. You know what? I think We're Don Jr. That. doing a dab would be great. <laughs> <laughs> so so big increases in the, in the international cannabis industry, more countries legalizing. Um, what? How did that pan yeah, out? I, th- I think. Did, Andrew, do we know of other yeah, countries Andrew that legalized? Yeah, Andrew was right about that. Andrew, right? There's a there was a lot of movement in the international market in legalization. Uh, Mexico's coming up, and so um, yep. You know, yeah. So he, I think he was right on with that. Your next prediction right. was that there would be no federal legalization because of Mitch. Well, you right. nailed that one. <laughs> I think we could all Pretty yeah, much. we could all make that one. Um, yep. You said you said that Tucker Carlson <laughs> would make. A line of ties. That was because the week before, <laughs> Phil had gone off on Tucker. So that was a joke that... Oh, yeah. I was railing on Tucker Carlson. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he was saying um, some uh, anti-weed stuff. And, and I, now, I predicted that he's going to come out. Oh, hemp ties. That's right. That's right yeah. going to come out with his own hemp line ties, of hemp ties. That's right. <laughs> Did that happen? No. No, I don't think that no, happened. But we'll, no, we'll, no. So you missed, you yeah, missed well, that we'll one. We'll give you that one. We'll take that one I was going to say one of the ones that I recall was the anti-cannabis groups would, would mount a pushback. Um, and, um, I don't know that we saw ah. that as much as we, we had thought. What do you think, Andrew? I thought that, I think we did see some pushback. Absolutely. Did you? Okay. How would you, where? I mean, I, I don't know. Well, you know, people have, you know, this year we heard, uh, well, because of the COVID virus, I mean, the, the people weren't, you know, in session a lot. That's true. But you heard a lot of congressmen and senators saying, you know, doing whatever they could to, you know. I don't know. I, I think it's a gateway drug and all that crap. I don't think you're, you're seeing that. They did. That's true. I don't true. think you're seeing that as much as we. Not, not, well, not as much as you think, did, yeah. but, I, but I still. And I think it's too yeah. dangerous for them politically now because the, the, the polling just, I mean, you got to be a moron to go out there and. Uh, but, but there's still. Well, are, that's, that's really there's still true. There's a few, though. They're injured. Well, there's it depends on your geographic location. I, I think there might be some states where if you want to make it through the primaries, you got to. Be against weed, right? But when you have Mississippi legalized, South Dakota, <laughs> yeah, South Dakota, Oklahoma, yeah. the re- the resistance is starting to yeah, wear down. Absolutely. Uh, let's take a listen to Phil's predictions. Well, I am going to start with a, a little political um, prediction. It was uh, been widely 
reported that 66% of uh, American citizens favor legalization of marijuana. I'm saying that by the end of 2020, that number is going to be closer to three quarters. That's going to be 75% of Americans. Damn. Now, it's going to be, it's not going to be spread evenly across the country. There's still going to be plenty of places where it's not popular. But I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb and just I'll go as far as 75 percent. I think we're going to gain nine percentage points in Damn. the coming year. Where is that going to happen? Where are they going to get those points from the right or the left? We're going to get those points from not the so middle. much the right or the left, but from housewives, suburban housewives, um, evangelicals, people mm-hmm. who traditionally have been on the opposite side are going military. to start realizing military start going to uh, and and I think it's going to uh, be much more widely accepted within the medical community. So I think one of the leading edge issues of cannabis reform is going to have to is going to will have to do with prison reform and incarceration reform and, oh, and criminal uh, justice reform in general. Criminal justice reform in general. Another prediction is uh, along those lines is. Um, that um, Mayor Mike Bloomberg, former Mayor Mike Bloomberg, who is a vocal anti-marijuana, I won't say crusader, but that's that's where his stance is. He's going to change his stance um, as he gets further into the uh, uh, primary season. He's going to be faced with that at some level, and he's going to modify. He's on record as saying that. Legalizing marijuana was, quote, the stupidest thing anybody has ever done, unquote. And, uh, I, you know, my position is that criminalizing marijuana is the stupidest thing anyone has ever done. But but um, I predict that there's going to be some modification in that before this primary season is over. Because uh, he's going to I mean, stick around to the convention. He's got the money to do it. And sometime between now and July, it's going to happen. And I admit, I kind of went out on a limb a little bit, but, uh, you know, you get caught up in the moment. I predicted that by this time, 75%, fully three quarters of Americans would favor legalization. Um, now that didn't quite come to fruition. That was, uh, but there was a big gain. By this time last year, um, it was, uh, somewhere around 65, 66%. And it got up to close to 70%, 68, 69%, depending on which one. Gallup had it yeah, at 68%. You, you, I think you're pretty close. So it, it, it inched forward. It didn't surge forward, at least according to the to the polling. Um, but um, I, I think... It's getting damn close to your prediction, in fairness. It, it's getting close enough so that this pushback that that we're still experiencing in some quarters is kind of starting to ring hollow. The writing's kind of on the wall at this point. I, I think one thing that I, I was pretty accurate on was that the leading, kind of leading edge uh, reform issue for legalization did in fact turn out to be prison reform. Absolutely. Yep. No question. Prison reform, the, the first step had passed a couple of years before, and but um, when they passed the Moore Act in the House and uh, passed the Research Act in the House and Senate, um, they touted it as a victory for for uh, legal reform. Yeah. And, and so so that was really a driving force, Absolutely. you know. Absolutely. I uh, think you're exactly right. It. So that, I, I, think, I think I did definitely hit that one on. You the nailed it. One, the, no, the, one that just, the one that's kind of a laugher is, is, is Michael Bloomberg, who... who uh, Became very shortly <laughs> after my prediction, probably the biggest who gives a damn in politics. <laughs> he dropped out like what was it, March first or second? Right? Like the next, yeah, like yeah, the next couple of weeks. Yeah, he so was you done. Pretty, that, well, that's wah, wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not so good on that prediction, but hey, you know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> well, okay. There's all right now. Okay, well, let, let's listen right, to yours. In the very near future, I think in the next month or two, you're going to see uh, the DEA. And you're going to see federal task forces raid illegal THC vape shops and cartridge manufacturers. I think you're going to see arrest by officials, local officials, primarily in L.A., but in California, people who are on the Bureau of Cannabis Control, the BCC. I think you're going to see some of them go down for bribery. 
Really? There were some people who were apparently were taking some cash to kind wow. of let some of these cartridges in the tens of thousands slide through. So we'll see. That that would be interesting. I think New York will pass adult use. That'd be I mean, cool. I think, yeah, I think most people feel that's going to happen. But my final one is weed stocks. I think weed stocks are going to remain overall remain stagnant or maybe even drop a little bit more. I just don't see I don't see the stock market taking off as a whole as a you know as a sector until we get the scheduling and we get the banking bill finalized and those things. I just don't see it happening. So I agree with you. I don't either. All right. Well, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> With regard to the first one, the DEA and the feds and all right. that. Well, you know, the, the, it wasn't 100% wrong. They did raid some vape shops, quite a few. And they did uh, take some of the vape shop owners into custody, find them, et cetera, because they were selling, you know, cheap Chinese ripoff. Uh, but the part about the uh, about the investigation into the, the, the you know, the BCC and all that, eh, we have to remember that one year ago, the tainted vape cartridges was a pretty hot. hot that was the big issue. story. Was the yeah. story. A year ago, yeah. Corona what? You know, you would have said coronavirus. Right, exactly. Right. COVID. No. no one. Uh, a year ago now, no nobody one, knew what that no was. One, very right. few. If well, anyone I, knew I researched this morning looking to try to find if anything more had happened with that, with my prediction. Uh, and there is an ongoing investigation, but no, nothing has happened with regard to BCC uh, actual indictments for uh, folks who are on the board and so forth. Uh, I, they, I mean, in California, and Oregon, and Washington, and Ohio, they did bust a bunch of shops. But anyway, Andrew's right. That was the big story at the time. What was my other thing? Um, oh, New York. Well, that was no big, huge prediction. Everybody kind of saw that coming, and it didn't happen. <laughs> New York. No, and that's surprising yeah, I, to me. New Jersey, yeah. yes. So, New now York, I'm 0 for 2. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, New York. Yeah, but, but, you know, but but uh, Jersey was legalized. So you're and, and that, you know, and th- New York is going to be right behind them. I mean, there's no way New York's going to, uh, uh, the legislators are going to let Jersey cash so, well, let's in. Let's wait till we get to our predictions for okay, next year. Okay, good call, good call, yeah. good call. And yeah, the other right. one was stocks, and uh, I predicted that the stocks would flatten it, 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 and that certainly happened that was no big i mean i'm not the only one you predicted it too. yeah you, you you didn't have to be right. uh no you know, to kind of sign to see right. right. that one out right so those were our predictions from last year i don't think it was all bad we did okay okay what about next year <laughs> who wants to go first <laughs> i'll go first i'll go first okay okay i predict that they, they're gonna uh pass the regulations and legalize personal use in maryland this year. Cool. Yay! I think we're also going to see like New York and many other states are going to legalize for recreational because of the COVID virus. And again, right. we need to get jobs and we need to get some money rolling. But, but uh, I'm still on the fence as far as uh, federal legalization, especially with, uh, you know, with Mitch. With, yeah. Yeah. With, yeah with Mitch, it, it all depends on what happens in the uh, Senate. In Georgia. Right. Regarding, um, regarding that, um, there, there is a, a, a top Democrat, um, namely Senator Chuck Schumer of New York, said that even if now he said, of course, if if the Democrats control the Senate and he becomes he would become the Senate Majority Leader, more like more than likely, um, he will act to to legalize um, on the federal level. But even if he doesn't, even if the GOP holds control he says that there's still an opportunity even under mitch mcconnell to uh surprisingly um move federal legalization forward he said uh quote it'll move a lot faster end quote if he is the majority leader but he said on the issue he said i believe even if and he threw in god forbid i'm not the majority leader (laughs) I believe that the pressure on McConnell is going to increase and we could make some progress. <laughs> um, so that is... Hedging his um, bets, I think, there a little bit. Well, it's partly hedging his bets, but I, I, I think he's speaking as somebody who knows Mitch and knows the That's issues true. That's true. And, and knows the makeup of the Senate. Um, even if it is in GOP control, it's not going to be as strongly in GOP control and there will be added pressure. Um 
he, he said, uh, you know, he said that as long as Mitch is majority leader, it's going to be very hard unless we have tremendous public pressure uh, to get the bill on the floor. But he believes that, uh, you know, certainly if he's the majority leader, it'll pass. But if not, they could bring that pressure yeah, to bear. We'll so see. We'll, we'll see. see. But this, you know, this could be just another ish instance of a, a, a senator talking out his ass. <laughs> that happens from time and to time. That happens now. And <laughs> what now. else you got, yeah, Andrew? So. I also believe that you're going to start seeing uh, uh, mushrooms, psychedelic mushrooms, going to be legalizing yeah. more and more. Yeah, you're going to. I think we might see that in uh, on the East Coast. Now they've done a little on the West Coast, but now they're going to they're going to start seeing that on the good old right coast. Um, the right coast. Right. No, I think um, you're absolutely right about that. And and uh, um, Madeline Margolin, remember her? Uh, we sure. her great. Well, she's started an organization, a magazine, and it's dedicated to psychedelics and legalization, as I understand it. So we should have her back on. She's mm -hmm. a great guest. And I, I think you're right. There's so many articles out about it. And there's big push, big movement in uh, Oregon, Washington, and several other states, California, to legalize, um, well, they, they have already legally legalized uh, other drugs in Oregon. So well, in Oregon, they're right. going to start seeing more and more they decriminalization, them, yeah, and decriminalization and, and legalization of uh, psychedelics, recreational drugs other than marijuana. I think you're right. But now, to this point on the on the East Coast, this story came out a couple of days ago. Um, the New Hampshire Supreme Court ruled that a man convicted of possession of mushrooms was wrongfully tried because his use of psilocybin was part of his religious practices. So they basically up, upheld in New Hampshire the religious freedom to use psychedelic mushrooms. So do you think we'll, we'll see nationwide more and more people not going to jail for drugs and drugs being uh, handled like a med medical issue? I hope so. Uh, I, I think, think we're going to start seeing that prediction. more and more. Because I think I so many cops with you. are going, I'm not going to arrest this guy. You know, yeah. And plus, I was gonna. He's in tenth grade. I'm gonna. He won't be able to get right. into college. Yeah, I'm not gonna right. do it to this kid. He's good. He just had a fucking joint fell out of his pocket. Well, you're hoping that's time. the attitude of a cop, but you know. Yeah, but also you're gonna see judges and prosecutors going. There's gonna be some uh, DAs that are going. Man, yeah, I got more yeah. important things to do than than that. That's a good this point. Kids, a couple we, of high school, well, a couple of college kids who fucking you know after a football game. We're caught in the car smoking a joint, yeah. you know? Give me a break. Well I, well, I think you hit it on the head when you said judges, too, because that's kind of the linchpin. Yeah. Because if the judges are going to dismiss these cases, the DAs are not going to waste right, their time right. with them. Got, oh, yeah, absolutely. It, I, I think you've hit it on the head with that and one. I, have, I think it's going to be yeah. less, of a, less of an issue. Yeah, any other predictions? One last one. I think Trump is going to come out with his own CBD line. <laughs> What's he going to call it, Andrew? What are you going to call it? <laughs> you haven't thought of any names yet? <laughs> what, what else he calls that? Trump. Trump CBD. Oh, of course I mean, it is. What else? Trump. Yeah. Yeah. It's just going to have his name on okay. it. You know? <laughs> the Trump brand. That's that's what he does. Oh, my God. That's funny. Do you want me to go next, Phil, or All you right. want to go next? I No, I want you to go next. I'm keen All to right. hear We'll you. save the best for last. That's oh, you. Whatever. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to start with something that uh, you, you both you guys just led up to, and that is... The Georgia race, the Senate race, I'm going to predict that's a split. I'm going to predict okay. that one goes D and one goes R, and that would leave McConnell as the leader. Uh, right. And that's also going to make it very difficult to get things through. So I, that's that's my prediction. I think it's going to be a, a split. I think Republicans take one, Dems take the other, and we'll see if, how that goes. I think that Virginia, since you did Maryland, I think Virginia is going to pass legislation that adds flour to the current medical program. Uh, yeah, think, and there's going to be many other states, too, I believe. Yeah. Oh, me, yeah, exactly. But uh, Mar obviously, Virginia is my state. So I also think there's recreational legislation that we'll see introduced maybe in 2021 for Virginia. Probably won't pass until 2022. But I think I think Virginia is going to surprise you. Um so I think that's possibly Texas, you know, is another one where they've had multiple bi uh, bills written up and, and introduced prior to the 2021 uh, session, which starts, you know, the next week or two, I think. So I think uh, uh, Texas could surprise us with some legislation. Right now, they have a, some bullshit low THC medical program. It's, you know, below 1%, uh, point, point uh, whatever is point 
three. Well, that's, well uh, that's something that also happened in the news this week, and that is that now hemp cross board can be one percent THC instead of that point three percent bullshit. It's so hard. Oh, to that's control. a big yeah. deal. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, because that's because great. it's sort of easier to grow a hemp under one one percent right, THC. I saw that. Yeah, but to get under three percent. Yeah, you know, it's just, three. I mean, yeah, it could be a beautiful, you know, a great growing season and the plants just right. thrive. And, right, you know, right. And plus you get a, a, a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to testing exactly. for the context. That's, right, that's the right. And point. it's just, you know, 1%. Come on, guys. And, and, and yeah. finally, I think stocks will do really well this year. Because I predicted last year they would flat be flat, and you know we we heard so many of these large companies over uh, you know over invested and purchased other companies and acquisitions and stuff, and really got themselves in in a bad place financially. But most of them have really good revenues, and and a good number of them still have pretty good cash. So this could be the year with all the additional legalization we've seen and so forth that the stocks should do well. I've, I've done well. The couple of stocks I've picked have done quite well in the in 2020. So I, I have no complaints, but the majority of the big verticals had trouble. You know, they've struggled. They're, they're, right. they're, they're stock right. prices. So they've, they've pared back uh, production and, and cut back on personnel. And, exactly. And True. they're, yeah. and, and they're probably going to be some mergers as well. Yeah. They're well, very- and also the dispensaries took a, Big hit with a coronavirus. I think they're, they can't oh, yeah. let all these people in and offer good customer service. And now it's like you know, get online, type in your order. Yeah, but and just go by and pick it up. You don't even have to get out of your car. But, but I disagree right. with you. They did not take a hit. They've done phenomenally well in 2020, despite corona. A lot of them did, but I think some didn't. Well, I'm looking at an article here in Leafly that came out uh, a couple of days ago, and it it talks about how. American huh. sales went up sixty seven percent for weed. Now, some of that's because you have more legal that, states. That's a that's that's sixty seven percent. But it's not because they went in and what they did is they did surveys on people who already were buying legal in twenty nineteen, and those individuals have bought significantly larger quantities and spent significantly more money in twenty twenty than they did in twenty nineteen. So these are people that we're already buying. I know I yeah, did. Exactly. Do you think so, because of coronavirus, more people are smoking weed? Yeah, I do. And that's what the article suggests. Uh, it says that when COVID-19 pandemic hit in the United States in March, many of the cannabis industry worried about the massive industry-wide shutdown. Instead, governors in most states declared cannabis an essential product. Dispensaries, and we know all this. We know. Customers, in turn, responded by stocking up uh, on buying as much as they were allowed to buy in many cases. So, yeah, I mean, and they do – here's a, new customers and patients obviously accounted for some of that because new states that came online and so forth. But it says here that the main driver was an increase in the average purchase size of established customers who increased their average monthly spending from 25 to 40 percent. Mm-hmm. That's wow. huge. Yeah, but – That is a large That's a huge increase. jump. So, anyway, I – Well, I know, I know the, the dispensaries that I've been going to – uh, one of them, which was my favorite a long, long time, that cannabis uh-huh. dispensary in, uh-huh. yeah, in Maryland. Yeah. Well, I liked them, but now you know they had what made them better than the other dispensaries was they had a, inside the shop. It was laid out really well. Uh-huh. It was they had a right. lot of uh, paraphernalia for sale, mm-hmm. and I really liked that. I I could pick up some papers, get me get a book, I always got magazines and stuff, and learn and some edibles. Then they had a nice, sele- pretty good selection on on um, a good uh, service. Yeah, and good show. inside. Yeah, but now uh, they put up a couple of tents up front that you drive through, right. and you and you type in your order before you get there, and it's uh, you know, no one knows you anymore. There's zero yeah. customer service. But that's and, yeah, that's and and they and when I talked to them about it, I said, "What? Well, when are you going to reopen the outside?" And they're going, "Oh, we're just going to keep it like this." Really? And I'm going, "But what about you know customer service? I mean, how can you?" <laughs> kind of defeats you know, all the purpose of a medical. I'm making air quotes. Yeah, medical program, medical, you know, in right, Maryland. You know, medical like some questions, or what about upselling me? Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, the the, yeah. the bottom line is sales have have boomed in 2020. Any way you look yeah. at it, um, well, it's a buyer, it's a seller's market. You know, everyone's going. Oh, we're doing great. Yeah, yeah. Only because yeah, there could have been no virus and you'd still be doing great. True. You know. True. I mean that's the, and that's that's a point. Let's let's look at that point for a minute. It's really hard to read the data 
because it's such a new industry. Okay, so they've only been doing it for and, and and it's such a screwy and year. A screwy I, have year. Another, I have another prediction. I I predict by the, by the end of the year, the, the competition is going to become greater. Uh, people are going to start. Price is going to start coming down because of competition, and you're going to start seeing all these people who are oh we're cool man we're fine and we're sort of arrogant yeah. in there. And at least in Maryland, we see that. Mm-hmm. When there's something, right. You know, I think, oh, uh, I think that's within the next year, you're going to start seeing them regretting their, their cockiness. They're going to their start. Their cockiness, yeah. Start going, I, I think you're right. You know, what can we do to, like, have better customer service instead right. of choice? Instead of choice turning our nose at us. And then as an older, I get it as being an older person. They talk down to me. They talk to me like yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, you know, or I what I'm talking about. They said, do you have any, qu- any, right. do you have any questions? And I was like, uh, no, do you? <laughs> I mean, you know, because I don't know. I know a fair amount about what Yeah, we, you don't really you know, need the uh, uh, the direction. So we have one one co-host here left to give their predictions. That's yeah, me. that's you. But before we do that, let's real quick right. run through a list of the folks that we had on, the, guests that we had on the show last year. And we'll All save right. you. The, oh, let's yeah, do we that. had some great guests. We, we did. Guests. We we really yeah, did, we re- and we're going to have some really really incredible guests in twenty twenty one. Yeah, we started off with uh, episode ninety six was Steve Fox. Remember Steve? He's the uh, cannabis yeah. reform advocate. I think he was the the a lobbyist, and he's the head of the Cannabis Trade Federation, right? Yeah, he was the guy who wrote, I believe, the Colorado legalization right. law. Regulations, right. really That's smart. Right. He, wrote, the, he wrote regulations. The bill. He wrote yeah, the bill. Phil. Phil interviewed right. him. Then you. Or he, wrote, he wrote the first draft. And then in so episode yeah. ninety eight, you interviewed Albert Coles, and he's a medical a researcher, yeah, a researcher yep. CBD and and medical marijuana researcher who really did a great job, I think, of breaking down physiologically how THC and CBD and interact and the whole entourage yeah. effect. And, and the benefits of it in a way that really helped me understand it. Um, and, and I thought that was a, a terrific. Yeah, yeah he was great. And then I interviewed a guy named Mohan Sundarison. I think I pronounced the, the artist. artist. He's yeah. fantastic. And if you if you follow cannabis stuff online or on any of the social media, you see him all. You follow our Facebook uh, yeah, page. Or any, I mean, you see him all over LinkedIn and all the uh, social media. He's great, really talented artist and a great guy. Then Heather Allman was on, also a medical cannabis writer and journalist. Yep. And uh, she was really smart, really interesting. We had Jen yeah. Michelle Pedini, the executive director of Virginia Normal. And also uh, works for uh, National Normal. I'm um, really, right. really smart guest. Knows everything there is to know about what's going on legislatively yeah. in Virginia. So if you're in Virginia and you're interested, you should definitely check Jen Michelle Pedini out. And our episode was 112. Then we had the big kahuna on, uh, Steve Steve D'Angelo. Yeah. The yep. father of legal cannabis and the starter of Harborside and, and – and the last prisoner. Absolutely, project. one uh, episode one seventeen was uh, was was Steve. Then we had Warren Bobro. Remember Warren, the mixologist. <laughs> Warren was great. <laughs> yeah, he's a great guy, man. You should definitely check out Warren. He's he's got a line of new drinks coming out, or a new drink, I yep. guess. A new and, drink. And you gotta know out. where this guy's coming from. He wrote he writes books on on mixology, making drinks and inventing drinks. And he says the drink that he's about to bring to the market is a cannabis infused drink will set aside all other drinks to date because it tastes so great. So, and I believe him. He's a good dude. And then we had finally our last two guests on two separate shows. Uh, Warren was on episode 129, by the way, we had Kurt Dalton, uh, cannabis.net. He's on episode 142. Love Kurt. He's our buddy. Good yep. friend. And our other good friend, Jimmy Young, was on episode 134 with uh, uh, Pro Cannabis Pro Media. Cannabis Media. And he does a show with Kurt and our own Phil Adams. So those are our guests yeah. we had this year. Guys, let's well, bring no, back I, memories. I, I, I did an I did interview. I interviewed uh, uh, Anita. She was my shooter girl at Senior Frogs in Cancun. She also got me <laughs> yeah. some weed. And we talked about I interviewed her. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. After you did tequila shots out of her belly button, or <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> How's Anita doing? Just fine. <laughs> Just fine. we talk all the time. Oh, sweet. Well, we we I'm, are. I'm going we after are I get the... through all this medical <laughs> bullshit I'm going through. And part of I had some oral surgery, and part of I sound a little funny. Uh, once I finish all this, I'm going down to Mexico for a couple weeks. And and taking us with you. 
I want to go. <laughs> no comment. He might be taking Anita. But he didn't invite us, so, you know. <laughs> All right. We're ready for a big drum roll for Phil's predictions to close things uh, up. No, I don't, I don't think it warrants a drum roll, but... Uh, <laughs> But, uh, all right, so first of all, um, I, I think that uh, uh, not so you much know, Phil, involved we paid for the fucking sound effect. You're getting a goddamn <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I think the first thing is that uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide oh. is going to win another <laughs> national championship. What does that have to do with cannabis? Nothing. Okay. It's all just right. a prediction. Um, I think uh, it's a roll safe Tide. Bet. Um, but I don't know. Ohio State looks really good. Um, did they just win? Um, a, did yeah, they just play a, a, a big championship game? They played the Rose Bowl yesterday, and and dis, they handled God, Notre it's a Dame. Blowout. It was a blowout, and and uh, Ohio State blew out Clemson, which I didn't think was possible, but they Boy, did. Did they it. ever? I was uh, surprised. But but anyway, um, I I think that. The, the next thing that really kind of does have to do with life in general, but also directly affects weed, is that the the coronavirus, the, the COVID pandemic, will begin to subside. Um, that the, the vaccines are coming out. Um, They're already, I my, my niece has already received her first dose. Um, I have someone else in my family received a, their first dose. By March, people in general are going to start getting them and... That is going to kind of relax life for the following summer. We're going to see a little bit more normalcy. And with that, um, on the heels of the big year that cannabis had in 2020, I think we're going to see a lot more of cannabis consumption kind of taking its place alongside of alcohol, just as a a social, you know, everyday mainstream thing. And um, and and that will feed into what Andrew predicted is that the 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 demand for cannabis products is going to increase the the choice and competition in the cannabis industry is going to expand and and those you know companies and especially the uh, dispensaries that say we're just going to keep doing you know the online and and not do customer service well they may find it more difficult than they think to ignore customers. Um, I think there is the trend that in spite of all the new states with legalization, cannabis use among teenagers and the youth, you know, Mm -hmm. users will not expand appreciably. It will stay steady. Um, And, and I think those numbers, uh, that data is born that true already. And and it's already born it. And, and I think it's going to continue because, you know, really, the kids who want weed can already right. get it. So you're not expanding the market. You're just making it legal. Um, now, maybe the legal use will go up, but it, it won't expand, you know, the number of kids using weed. Now, they shouldn't. Right. I will be the first to say that if you're not an adult, your brain is not fully formed. You shouldn't be doing much, if any, weed or alcohol. Now, it's going to happen. We did right. it. Um, and it's not the end of the world, but you shouldn't yeah. really. We we don't advocate use of of teen use of cannabis at all. Um, I I think um, and, and uh, those those are the main ones, and 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 mostly uh, roll tie. Let me ask you, because <laughs> you're you're kind of our political guru here. What are your thoughts on the Senate race in Georgia? Because that does have an impact. I think it's going to be a split, just you like you so say, um, mm-hmm. and. And I think that means that the uh, the GOP will retain control, barely, and will contrain, uh, retain control of the Senate agenda. That's um, the main thing. That's yeah. the main thing, and um, I, I, and I think that will uh, it, it will slow down federal legalization, but not by much. I, I really think that the pressure is starting to build, and what we saw in twenty twenty will continue in 2021 and, and even more so all right what well, we saw in 2020 if uh mitch is still speaker uh majority leader in the senate we yeah. will and we will be sitting here and we'll go we'll have gone nowhere in the, in the yeah. this coming year well that's maybe that's the way to wrap this up as a quick round table on federal legalization yes or no phil <sighs> 
let's let's put it this way off schedule one off schedule you know off schedule one no andrew i hope so i hope we get off schedule one i think there's a possibility we know you hope so <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we all hope so. I'm going to say yes. Then we're, I say yes. Okay. I say it's going to go right. on schedule one. I'm going to go with you. I'm going to say yes. Or, there, or there's going to be some movement federal. I'm going to say federally there will be a descheduling. De- so we'll see. Well, Phil's not saying I'm only because he stuck his foot in his mouth. Well, he's cautious because yeah, he's called for it for the last. <laughs> well, that's part of it. That's part he's of it. For the last but the years. other he's part of it is that I think I think that the best <laughs> shot that we had in 2020 of re, of removing it from schedule one was the Supreme Court challenge right, right. Um, that the Supreme Court chose not to listen yep. to. They didn't, right. hear the ch- they didn't hear the case. They booted it. And they booted the case. And uh, I-, I think it's going to take a court challenge to do it. And if, if it doesn't get any... Now, the, uh, the new makeup of the court could change things, but I don't think it's changing it in, in the direction of descheduling. Right. So um, um, un- unless, it, uh, unless it passes, you know, legislation... Um, I don't know. Like Andrew I'm, says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's possible, but no. Got to get by uh, by our buddy Mitch, and that's not likely. Well, folks, there it is. Our New Year's podcast for Bro- Vote Pro Podcast. We're glad you're here. We hope you have uh, learned some things, or at least uh, you know killed some time (laughs) a lot of great stuff coming up in 2021 a lot of great stuff coming up so so keep uh downloading tell your friends about us go on to apple Podcasts. give us a five star rating we really would appreciate that and uh i i know you've got some thoughts and some ideas and and other things that you can tell us about and jay can tell us how to do that yeah, reach out to us, please. We like to interact with our audience as much as possible, and a lot more than we have been lately. So send us an email, podcast at votepropot.com. And we have a message line, which is uh, 240-257-2441. And do us a favor, send us your predictions, and we'll read them on the air. What do you got, Andrew? Well, here's what you can do. If you are uh, in one of the states that just legalized this year, and congratulations, good work, people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. You need to get involved in the in the writing up of the regulations. You really should get involved. Get you know, find out who your state senators are, and and make make some noise. Make because, your voice heard, right? Right. Yeah. Go to normal.org. Because like right now in New Jersey, they're they're trying to say, oh, it's legal, but you can't grow it. That's, like, that's bullshit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. That is right. still bullshit. So they, we got to get got to make some noise. You can keep track of other things that are going on. In the politics and in the industry of cannabis, by checking out our our social networking platforms. So go to Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter, and do a search for Vote Pro Pot. Mm-hmm.